The music to Warpaint, it's, it's pretty eclectic. There's some of it that sounds almost like a classical music, then there's some swinging stuff, and there's some fun stuff, and some, I hope, beautiful stuff. To then have it realized with a gorgeous 17, 18 piece orchestra we had today, you have to kind of pinch yourself. Elizabeth Arden and Helena Rubinstein were stars of the scene in their own time. It seemed only fitting that you needed larger than life stars to play them. The opportunity to write material for two of the greatest leading women on the musical theater stage was just irresistible. Classic Venetian cream amaretto, take home a 10 ounce jar, and you get a sample of my new fragrance of love, l'amour. Michael Corey is a true wordsmith. He delights in language and he's very exacting about it. The music really evoked first the 30s and then the 40s and the 50s so sensationally. And it really provided a huge amount of inspiration for me and the costume designer, Kathy Zuber. I sit in the back of the theater and I hear this score and like the audience, I'm laughing, I'm weeping, I'm soaring along with it. The Daily Press is here to meet my boat. There's simply are no words and you may quote. America, your wait is through. At this, my new New York debut. I cannot wait to reinstate my show. Back on top. It's thrilling to be here today making our cast album, and it throws me back to 1978, lying on the sofa in my parents' den in Dallas, Texas, listening again and again to Patty singing songs from Evita on the hi-fi. And it blows me away that now in 2017, I'm actually in a New York recording studio, and Patty Lapone is laying down tracks for a musical that I actually wrote. With my Picasso, his early cubist years, I pose no clothes with him. Thank God who knows with him. He says your ears are like elephant in size. I say from you, well, who can tell from ears or eyes? When you're writing for a talent like Patti Lapone, you want to give her the very best material. The song Forever Beautiful is one I'm especially proud of. Patti whips the audience into a frenzy and has such total command over the material. My God, she brings the house down every single time. She's never sounded better and she's never been better. The flesh may fade, the canvas lives immortally, and that I'll hang from all through all eternity. Who gives a damn? There's a wistful and beautiful song that Michael and Scott wrote called If I'd Been a Man, and I think it sort of epitomizes what it was like for the two of them to lead these giant companies and turn cosmetics into a million dollar business in its day. They sacrificed a lot in order to do it, and that song really communicates just how much they had to give up in order to succeed. Pink is a song that we wrote for Christine. She gets really ferocious in it. It was amazing to see Christine run with that song too because it's so much more epic than I ever could have imagined it. The glint of sunrise on a frozen pond. You know, Elizabeth Arden is somewhat emotionally buttoned up through much of the show and she has to wrestle with what her legacy will be and whether she'll be able to continue it as the head of her business. Pink, my life's work withered on the vine. Pink, all for a document to sign. In pink ink. There's a song that both women sing together in the very, very end of the show called Beauty in the World. They both kind of bemoan the fact that the world has changed. What was once considered beautiful might have fallen out of fashion, but I think we all hearken back to a time when there was beautiful art or beautiful clothes or beautiful music, when there was a kind of possibility of beauty. In Beauty in the World, they really get to sing to each other, and there's a, a special kind of chemistry in that. Taste and Now it's noise 
a dress rehearsal on the past, the age of everlasting beauty in the world. The project was challenging because historically speaking, these are two women that never actually met. They avoided each other at all turns because their animosity was so great. I ask myself, will they ever have the courage to come face to face? With Michael and Scott, all you have to do is suggest an idea and they take it beautifully to town and they wrote the remarkable closing first act song, Face to Face, which is, I think, one of the show's real highlights. We cling to our instinctive grudges. It is real. As a composer, that's what you want. We write it, but then they've got to deliver it and hopefully knock it out of the park. Just to talk. To spoil, man to man, winter queen on a pond.